Father. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given unto us, Lord. Once again, Lord, for the, another opportunity, Lord, that we have, Lord, to be able to come and gather around your word, to be able to come, Lord, and praise and worship you, Lord. We ask you for your blessing, Lord. We ask you for your anointing, Lord. We ask you that your will be done on the earth as your will is always done in heaven, Lord. God, I ask you that you use this service to reach down people, Lord, to touch the hearts, Lord, that they will open the hearts and they will receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord. God, once again, we thank you. And we welcome you in this place, Lord. This is your house, Lord. We are your people, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your promise unto us to be with us this morning, Lord. And we give the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Let's praise his name. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name. The King who is worthy. Yes, Lord. That's why we are come, Lord. Love Lord. The King who is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. 
other name except the name of this power in the name of Jesus, that deliverance in the name of Jesus, salvation in the name of Jesus, that is hope in the name of Jesus, that is peace in the name of Jesus, that is future in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. We believe in Lord. precious name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Precious and wonderful name is the name of Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, that you've given unto us, Lord, to call upon the name of Jesus, to lift up the name of Jesus, to draw near to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let him and give him the name. The other name. The name of Jesus. He will bow down. That it is the King of kings and the Lord of the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hi. 
We were blind. But now we see, Lord. Because what you did in our life, Lord. Truly we don't deserve. The love, your grace and mercy, Lord. But now love us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Took upon yourself a form of a and you came and dwell among us, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you became obedient even unto death. Thank you, Lord. That's the ultimate sacrifice, Lord. That you endure for each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's how much God loves us. That's how much Jesus loves us. He took our place on the, on the cross. He paid the price for our sin. He washed us in precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Let's prepare our hearts for communion this morning. You should have a cup in your hand. If you don't have a cup, you can just want to get it. Thank you, Lord. this morning, Lord. Your sacrifice. Now, before we take communion, let's, let's pray our let's lift our voice together to God. God for forgive. The Bible said that we ought to we have done anything wrong and we ask him a little prayer together. You can repeat up we want to say, Lord God, we come to you this morning. Want to for your son and save Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for forgiveness. Thing in our life that doesn't please you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that you fill us with more of your grace, Lord. God, without thing, Lord. But one thing we know that in our sight you do all things. So we thank you this morning, Lord. That we are part of your bride, Lord. That one day see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that the night Jesus was praying, he took bread and he broke it. And then he gave to his disciples and he said, eat this broken for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And in the, the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he gave to the disciples and he said, drink this the new covenant for the remission of your sin. Do this as often as you want and remember some me until thank you Father. Father we pray for those who are not with us this morning Lord you know what kept them away Lord. We ask you that you touch them Lord that you speak the heart and mind Lord. We also pray for our and save loved one. We pray for our friend, neighbors, co-worker, Lord. We pray for this world, Lord. We pray for this country, Lord. God, upon us, Lord. God, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes upon you, Lord. But to call us. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us, moment after moment, Lord. Truly, your mercy endure for Lord. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God Almighty. Thank you for coming out this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't forget, 6 o'clock this evening. We're still at church. You want to join together with us. Amen. This weekend, I guess a lot of people went away. But God doesn't go. God doesn't take vacation. He's always with his people. So when we gather together in his name, it promised us to be with men. Praise the name of Jesus. We've been talking about uh, Revelation chapter 13 last week. May the Lord bless the preaching of his word. If you were last week, we spoke about John was standing on the sand of the sea and he saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Now, Revelation chapter 13, one thing I have learned by studying scriptures, Satan is not original. Satan always trying to imitate God. And in Revelation chapter 13, we find the demonic trinity. See, God is, there is one God manifest in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in Revelation chapter 13, we find Satan imitation of the Trinity. We have the dragon, which is Satan. We have the beast, the John saw rising up out of the sea, which is uh, the Antichrist, you know, imitating uh, Jesus. And in Revelation chapter 13, from verse 11 to verse 18, we found the beast the rise up out of the earth. Let's read verse 11. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a, like a dragon. So another beast. Now the Greek word for Another is the, the Greek word alos, which means one of the same kind. This, this second beast that John sees rising up out of the earth is the same one, the same character, same species than the first one that John saw in the prior uh, verses. This beast was different than the first one. Now, we have a picture. I want to show the picture of the, what this beast looks like. It. Note it. This beast rising up out of the He had two horns like a man. And when he the word that came out from the mouth of this beast, demonic, John said he spoke like a dragon. Back to verse 11. John actually saw the beast as he was rising and as he was coming up out of the earth. If you remember, the first one came out of the sea, and we, we, we said there, the sea represents people, nations, the Gentile world, and that's where the Antichrist is going to come. But this beast, he came out of the earth. Now, the reason... That he came out, out of the earth is to distinguish this beast from heaven. This has nothing to do with heaven. This beast that look that it has two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. It's nothing to do with God. But it's a beast that comes out of the earth to distinguish from anything that has to do with God and heaven. Actually, this beast in Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, is called the false prophet. 
And I saw a clean spirit like frog coming out of the mouth. Oh, we get the uh, satanic trinity, the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and the third out of the mouth prophet. So this beast that John saw rising out of the earth, that two horns like a lamb, is identified by God, by the Holy Spirit, as the false. That's why it's called and is distinguished as rising up of the earth, but distinguish him from the true prophet that are sent by God and they speak and proclaim the word of God. Now, one thing we got we to gotta keep in mind. When this event is going to take place, which is going to be in the middle of the tribulation, the real church, the true church, is gone. We are gone. The bridegroom, Jesus Christ, came back for the bride. So the church is going to be removed from the face of, from the, face of the earth. So the only people that are going to be left on the earth is going to be the, apost the apostate church, the church that departs from the truth, and they stop preaching the truth, but they start believing and preaching a different gospel. If you read Revelation chapter 2 and verse 3, when Jesus addressed the seven churches of Asia Minor, the last three churches, the church of Sardis, the church of Philadelphia, and the church of Laodicea, they represent the three kind of churches that are going to be present in the last days of the earth. So this is the church. God, if you read it, go back on Revelation chapter 3. But if, when you go home, if you read Revelation chapter 3, Jesus addressed the church as you are dead. And there's a lot of churches in this world right now which are spiritually dead. The presence of God, the anointing is not there. The anointing and the presence of God has departed. And the reason that the presence, the, the presence and the power of God is the purpose of the church is to stop believing and preaching the truth of God. And they fall, they're gone also after a different gospel, which is not the, the one to us by the Holy Spirit through the apostle. The, sec the, the, the second church, there also Jesus speaks to the church of Laodicea. If you remember, lukewarm church. Jesus said, you are not, not, you are not called. I'm going, to, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. So in this time, when this event is going to take place, the true church is gone. The apostate church is left upon the earth upon the face of the earth. And all the churches are going to join together. And eventually, as we're going to see in a few minutes, they are all are going to worship the beast, the Antichrist. They will come to power on the face of the earth. Now, He had two horns in Revelation verse 11. He has two horns like a lamb, the not of witness. This second beast, this false prophet, he will witness of the first beast, the Antichrist. And when he opened his mouth, he will speak like a dragon. There's been an, uh, let's put it, there's been an, uh, an increase, I don't know if you've been following the news, but there's been, there has been an increase all for every church to join together. It doesn't matter which God you worship, it doesn't matter what you believe, there's been a universal call for every church to join together, to work together. You can worship your God. I worship my God. You can do what you want to do, but let's come together in the name of God, in the name of peace. I want to show you a few things that I came across. 
that I'll emphasize how this uh, move to join all church different uh, different to what they believe or what they what kind of truth they they hold dear to them but we want everybody to come together which is exactly what is going to take place during the tribulation period when all the church in the world are going to join together and give their worship to the antichrist look at the first one Roman Catholicism, Evangelical, Pagan, Muslim, and Buddhist. They've gathered this year at the Ring of Peace under the auspice of the United Nations as a religion. Notice, one world religion. It's going to be one world government, but also it's going to be a one world religion during the second part of the period we re we 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 saw that in Revelation 17 you know and uh, my a month back when I spoke about uh, the persecution that will come as believers during the tribulation period and I want you to notice something they they gathered together in Germany uh, supposed to be a picture Different religion. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. Let's be one. Let's be one. Let's join together. And let's form and one world religion. And I want you to know that the, 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 as we could call the pulpit, the pedestal that they created is formed by rings. And, and, and represent uh the, the, the will of Buddha. The other ring represents the ring of the prophet Muhammad. The third ring represents the ring of Solomon. And the last one represents the ring of living parable, which, which speaks about different religion coming together as one. For a long time, but this idea of jo of joining all different religion together is intensified lately because of the formation on one world religion. Let me show something else. Also, this Pope Francis, and he's one of that is advocating. This one world religion. He went to Thailand and he presented to the Buddhist Supreme Patriarch with a declaration of human fraternity. He wrote this declaration of human fraternity so they basically say that we are all one. It doesn't matter which God you worship, it doesn't matter what you believe, we are all one and we must together. Of at one world religion. I want to show a picture too. That's when they came together in their temple and the Pope gave him this declaration of manifest of, uh, you know, of the fraternity of humanity. Thing else too. The Pope also went to Egypt and to the United, U, the United Emirate State. And in the name of Allah, him and the, the, pers the, the leader of the, Muslim, of the Sunni Muslim world, he found an agreement, joined the two religions together by worshiping, regardless who you, you can worship God, but let's come together and let's be one, let's form it in one world religion. I want you out there, it's a signature of, of the pact that they signed. You have the picture?
You have a right. That's the way they sign it, you know, with a kiss. You might say, what, what's wrong with it? What's wrong? You're worshiping your God, and I, God, I worship, what's wrong with somebody else worshiping a different God? What's wrong? It's something wrong. Because in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said this. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and I am the truth. No one come to the Father except by me. Jesus did not say, I am one of the way. And let me tell you, there's a lot of Christian preachers today who say that Jesus is one of the way, the lead to God. That Jesus is a signpost that lead to God the same way all other religions lead to God. That's not biblical. Jesus I am the only way. I am the only light. And I am the only truth. He said, no, they said no one, no one can come to the Father except truth. Pray to God. Anyone that to, to connect with God outside of the name of Jesus, he will not get there because Jesus said, I am the only one that can connect with God the Father. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor, nor is there salvation in any other not nor is there salvation in any other name, for there is no, no, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved except the name of Jesus. Peter is preaching the sermon, and Peter telling his audience, and if you read the gospel, they came from every nation in, in the city of Jerusalem, and up the Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He went out and he preached the word of God. And he said, there is no other name under heaven given by God to men that can save us except the name of Jesus. The name of Buddha, it does not bring salvation. The name of Allah does not bring salvation. Another small, great teacher, prophet, or great it does not produce. And pray to them. Other name. Of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12. Oh, wait. I got to, I got to. We said, remember John said, I saw a beast rising up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. I want to show you a small video about the Pope is giving a lecture. I mean, one of, I guess it's. The thing that he does every, you know, in Rome every Sunday. He's talking, he's, he's, he's going to speak in Italian, but it's translated in English. I want to see what he says. He said, there is no... Do, do it yourself in the church. Can you put the word? Is, is, do you have any word? Come on, can, can you do better than this? I want to show you to the, this is very important.
what happened. Do we give up? All right. You know what he's saying? Let me let me tell us that. He's talking about the relationship between Christians. Elish. 
He's not going to have the power and the authority to do whatever he wants any place is. No, but only when he's in the presence of the first beast, he's going to be able to exercise the authority of the first beast. Like we said before, the false prophet is going to act like the Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will not speak about himself. But he will take a mind and he will reveal unto you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's reveal us Jesus Christ. He take the word that Jesus spoke and he makes real unto us. He enlighten us that, so that we understand the truth of the word. And that's what the false prophet is going to do. He's going to be related with the Antichrist. And he, in his presence, he will perform and he will exercise all of his authority. And it causes the earth to dwell in it. Notice, worship for peace whose deadly wound was healed. That's his job. His job is to the whole world to worship the beast, the Antichrist. They will come on the earth. They will rise to power during Tribulation fear. Once again, I want to emphasize about the apparent, the, the, about the death and the resurrection of the Antichrist. Remember, so last week, it seems like when the Antichrist, he will be killed, but God will allow from the dead as an imitation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And said last week, God will allow this to take place so that those who rejected him, those who don't want to believe in him, are going to be deceived and are going to worship, you know, the beast. Verse 13. He performed great signs. Even makes fire come down from heaven. And this false prophet he will have the ability. Remember, God is in control. And God will allow him to do this. He will have he the power to perform great sign, great wonder, great miracle. He has the power to make fire even on the earth. Notice, every, all the whole world, most probably be performing this supernatural manifestation of power in the sight of all men. Verse 14. And he deceived. The idea is to deceive. The idea is to convince the whole world that the beast is a messiah, that the whole world has been waiting for and worship him and on for another God. There's no place for another Savior. There's no place for another Messiah. There's no place for another ruler. But only the only the beast, the serve, the worship of the whole world, and he deceived those. Or dwell on the earth by the sign, by those signs which he was granted to sign beast. That's the purpose to deceive people, to convince them to forget about God, forget about Jesus. They gone. Now they 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 will fire. Now the real God is here. The real Messiah is here, and He must be worshipped. He must be given the total allegiance. And He will tell those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast. Who was wounded, the sword, and live. He's not only going to deceive the whole world with the sign that he will perform, 
con it will t it will people from the earth. Hey, why don't we make a statue? A statue. Why don't we make a visible manifestation of the beast so that the whole world can see it and the whole world can worship? Remember, he died. He came back to life. He proved to us and he proved to the whole world that he's the Messiah that we have been waiting for. So let's make him an image. Verse 15. And he was grant, you know, to, to grant the power. He doesn't have the power to do this. God is sovereign, but God will grant him the power. And he was grant the power to give breath that the image of the beast Was as many as would now ship to be killed. Now you see the real reason for deceiving the whole world. Or to create an image for the beast. When the whole created the image, the false prophet, he will be able. Speak. That if anyone does not worship the image of the beast, he will be killed. So when this event takes place, people are, are going to have to make a choice. Am I going to worship the image of the beast? Or am I not going to worship the image of the beast? Now, if a person refused to the image of the beast, they are going, look what it said, they're going to be killed. We're going to see next week, during the tribulation period, the world will, will experience the greatest revival that this world has ever known. There are going to be more people in period than any time in human history. I'm going to, we're going to see this next week. But I just want to let you know that one of the purpose to image of the beast it was to convince all the world to bow down to the image and to worship the image of the beast. And those who will refuse, they are going to be killed. You might you might think, how far away? Are we from something like this to take place? I have another video. Let's see if our director up there is, is able to show it to us. I want to show this. I want to show how, how we, are not, uh, we are not actually close at this event taking place. We are actually living in the days when this is possible. This is the... In the, this is the Buddha temple where they created artificial, artificial intelligence God and want to know how they bow down and worship him. And not only they bow and worship the statue is talking to them. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
ってあるのはあのそこをうまく狙ってますでもその代わり動きとか言葉めちゃめちゃ人間らしい流暢にしてるっていうギャップを狙ってるっていうところですおいや死の問題に直面したとしても病気や災難に見舞われたとしてもこうした困難な状況が Now, if you don't understand what he was, what the talk, let me translate you. He was saying there, for a lot of people, it's hard to worship a God that we don't see it. So they came up with the idea to create a God that people can actually visualize, see it. And the, the, the young man who was there said that since this has been taking place, he has been, draw, has been drawn closer to God. And he had got a new love for God. So, as you can see, revelation is coming to pass right in front of our eyes. Not only in this country, but also in India, they have the same thing. They have artificial intelligence statue where people, in their temple, where people go there, they bow down, worship them, and the statue speaks to them. In America, A man called Lewandowski, he formed what is called the Church of, of Artificial Intelligence. Let me tell you something. We are not too far away. We are living in the last days, and whatever we just read, that is going to take place in the middle of the, of the tribulation when the false prophet, he will convince the people of the earth to make a statue of the beast and the whole world. We worship can take place because we have the technology to bring it to pass right today. See, that's why sometimes people say, you know, you've been telling us that Jesus is coming back for 2,000 years. But listen to me. 1,500 years ago, you know, 100 years ago, we didn't have the te technology to make all this thing beyond, be, be, become reality in our own eyes. But we have the technology right now for this thing to become reality and, and, and to come to pass. So, he will give breath. We read in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, to this image. And anyone who will now worship is going to be killed. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. It causes hell, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive. On the right hand and on their forehead. He does. False prophet will not stop on just telling the world to create an image. That he's going to make a talk. And then he's going to tell the whole world that if you don't worship the, the, this image of the beast, you are going to be killed. But then he will cause it. He will force Small and great, free and slave, to receive on the right hand, on their forehead. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the mark of the beast. You know, a lot of people say that it'll uh, be a microchip that is going to be embedded into people's hands, it could be. But if you look at the original Greek, it, the, the, when it, they said there a mark, to receive a mark, the, the, the original Greek word translated in the, in the English Bible mark, it means like a tattoo. It means like a visible mark in, in the right hand or or people forehead people have people are going to your right hand you want on your forehead it's up individual but notice everyone everyone is going to be forced to take them in. why everyone is going to be forced because look at verse 17 
and then no one may, may buy or sell mark of the name of the beast of the number of his name. Without the mark of the beast, and people right hand and forehead, without the mark, you're not going to be able to buy. You go to shop right, you put your grocery store into your cart, and then you go to the, you go to the cashier to pay, they're going to ask you, let me see your mark. You have no mark. Can't buy. The only one that can buy, people have the mark in their right hand, and their forehand. So, beast would be what will allow people to buy and sell during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Now, the mark of the beast, there's a lot also a lot of speculation about the mark of the beast, who the mark of the beast is, but the beast has something to do with the name of the beast or something to do with the number of his name. It's something that's going to be closely related with the beast, with the Antichrist. It could be something some people have called what's called, gener uh, no, they're trying to take the name of a person Name, and if the, if the name comes out to 666, it's easy Antichrist. And over the years, a lot of people have been identified as the Antichrist. Nero and uh, uh, Hitler, so many people. But the, we know, the only thing we know that the mark is something to do with the name of the beast and the, or the number of the beast. Verse 18. Verse 18, hear his wisdom. Or the Holy Spirit telling us is that to truly, to really understand with, you know, the mark, the, this thing about the mark of the beast, we need great wisdom. We need really a divine revelation. But then he said, here is let him who has understanding calculate the for it is the number of a man, and his number is six, six, six. So what you can see it's something that is really closely connected and related with the Antichrist. It's a number of a man. See in Scripture six speaks about men. Some people say that the reason I got three six because, you know, the beast, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, something to relate with. But one thing we know, we're not going to speculate. And we don't really care who the Antichrist, because we won't be here when the Antichrist, we won't be here when the Antichrist come to, to power. We won't be here when, when the ten nation is going to come to Get it. Out of the ten European nations, the Antichrist is going to come to power. We won't be here. We already be gone. Jesus already came and he took the church. So we don't really care who it's going to be. But whoever is going to be left behind, they're going to have to deal with them. And is is number of a man, and the number is six, 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 six. Now, you, how far away? We are from something like this taking place. I want to show you something. Look at this. Get ready for Google Skin Marks. A smart tattoo that will turn your skin into a digital touchpad to control your device via embedded sensor. Google is already working. And they almost finished to create a small tattoos where you put in your hands and by moving your hands, by moving your fingers, you could activate. It's like it, it, your hand is going to act the touching pad. And uh, one more. ID 2020. 
Hernandez's work is completed on the first ever certification mark for Kiva protocol. Now listen to this, implementing a global digital ID for buying and selling, the, the, what we just read. Without the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy, you will not be able to sell. They already have the technology that they are going to implement during the tribulation period to convince every person to take the mark of the beast. And without, they will not be able to buy, they will not be able to sell. Now, there are going to be people during the tribulation period who will not take the mark of the beast. And we're going to see next week. What happened was, those who don't take the mark of the beast, they're going to go underground to buy food for their family. They're probably going to have to go to the black market because you will not be able to buy in the regular store because the regular store will not sell it to you. You will not be able even to take money out of your checking account, your saving account. You will not be able to collect your pension if you don't have the mark of the beast. So people are going to survive but without taking the mark of the beast. Now let me finish with this. I want to show you something about the mercy of God, the love of God. See, sometimes when we read what's, what is going to take place in the tribulation period, some people say, but what kind of God it is that brings much destruction and so much debt and so much punishment upon the youth. But listen, let me tell you something. God has not changed. And it's God's will that no one should perish. Before this thing going to take place, God is going to warn the people. Look what it said in Revelation chapter 14 verse 9. God is going to send an end. Then a third angel follow them. Saying with a loud voice, God will send an angel from heaven. And this angel is going to speak with a loud voice to the whole world. And look what he said. If anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand, verse 10, he himself shall drink of the vine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11. And the smoke of the torment ascend forever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever of his name. Before the false prophet will tell the whole world that they have to take the mark, God will warn the whole world through an angel telling them, don't take the mark of the beast. Don't bow down and worship the image of the beast because if you do, you are doomed. You are destined for the wrath of God. See how God warned people before it brings judgment? God does that all the time. He does not just bring judgment. He warned people. He warned nations. He warned churches. And he's telling them, you got to repent. you got to change. you got to do the right thing. you got to go back to your first love. Because if you don't, and you leave no change. But to bring judgment upon you, and the same thing is going to take place in the tri during the tribulation period. God warned people before He poured out His wrath upon the whole world. Amen. That's why you and I to the picture. To the reason God is warning us about what's going to take place in, during the tribulation, not to scare us because we won't be here. We'd be gone. We'd be in heaven with Jesus. But the reason is that until the Lord tarry, we have opportunity to witness to our family, 
unsaved family member to our friend. Because remember, once a rapture takes place and we're gone, they're going to be left behind. They're going to have to deal with this stuff. So it's better for us to warn them, to tell them about the love of God, about Jesus Christ's sacrifice for their sin so that they can give the love to Jesus. So when the rapture takes place, we're going to go together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to escape the hour of trial that is coming to test the inhabitants of the earth. So listen, if you listen to me this morning, or if you listen to me online, and you are saved, good. I'm glad you're saved. But don't be afraid. Tell others they need to give the love to Jesus. Tell others that God loves them and he wants to have a relationship with them through Jesus Christ so that we can all escape. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for warning us, Lord. It's been in your word. It's been in the Bible for two, for a long, for many, many years, Lord. I know a lot of church don't preach this stuff because it's not very popular. Christians don't like to hear stuff like this. They like to hear stuff that makes them feel comfortable. And we also warn about that. Like in the last day, people will hire a preacher that they, to tell them what they want to hear, to stress the itchy ears, Lord. But God... You want us to warn people of what's coming on this world so that we can get ready and we can get busy to do your work until the trumpet is going to sound. And Father, we all, everyone in this room, we all have and we all know someone that if you will come right now, they will be left behind. They will have to go through the tribulation period. And God, we ask you to touch them, to open their eyes, to open their understanding, that they will surrender their life to you. We stand upon your word. We believe your promise. You said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family, Savior. We believe. And we thank you for saving them, Lord. Let's all stand up. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Not afraid. 